Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and this is beautiful Thursday. Have you seen the voters register? Because I think I looked at that and I can tell you that Raila is winning it. <laughs> yes, Raila stands a very big chance in winning the 2022 general election. In this video, I think I want you to relax and take some time because we are going to look at arithmetically the new voters register and how Raila stands a very good chance with very good laid strategy to take majority of the votes. I don't know, I don't know that this tra will translate to around 2.2, around um, the 50%, uh, the 50 percent or no, but I think if you ask me, he has a very good chance. So I know for people who maybe had not uh, seen the register, I want to tell you how it stands as now. Then we'll try to look at it vis-a-vis uh, -vis 2013 and 2017 and look at now the new strategies that can work. And I am just looking at it, guys. Huh? The new voters register is having additional 5 million voters. And it has now, uh, not 5 million, 3 million, 3 million voters from 19 million in 2017 to additional 3 million now, which is in 2022. According to that register, the total number eligible voters, before you know it's supposed to be taken for audit, so before it's taken for audit, it's in the tune of 22 million. The regional stand, Rift Valley is leading with 5 million, this is including all the counties of Red Valley, including Turkana, Narok, and Kajiado. The Mar community is still involved there. Then Nyanza is 3 million, Central 3 million, Eastern 3 million. Nyanza include the Lower Nyanza, and the Upper Nyanza, the Kisi, and the Nyamira. So Nyanza has all that. Eastern. Uh, Nairobi and Western are tying at 2.5 million each. Then coast is 1.9 and the Northeastern is at 800,000. So that is how it looks. So I wanted to tell you first on what I think, how Radio Dinga stands a very good strategy, a very good chance to sweep it this time round. But let me vis-a-vis -vis 2013. The 2013, the registered voters were 1.4 million and there was an 80% turnout. So the 80% turnout, Raila scooped 5.3, Uhuru's 4 million. Uh, 5.3, Uhuru 6.1, even though that was also contentious. Then in 2017, the register, people registered a lot. And of course now it went to 19 million, from 14 to 19. Then uh, the turnout was 77%, and Uhuru scooped 8.2 million, Raila 6.7. Again, that was contentious. So if you look at the trend, the voters register has been going up, but the turnout has been reducing. Now in 2022, we have 22 million, and what do you think is going to be the, the turnout? For me, I'm expecting a low... Uh, uh, um, the turnout would go down. First, there is no rallying call. And I'll explain this in my strategies. In 2013, the IBC, the, the, the ICC had really swept emotions of Kenyans, had really swept the emotions, and people were like, okay, it's time for it's clamor for that change. In 2017, we were going to an election where NASA had really polar, polarized the, uh, the ground. And people, there was, you remember the IBC must go in 2015. You remember the scandals that Raila Dinga was, the bombshell that was giving, uh, like the Aurora and Kimwadere dam, they were around that time in the run up to 2017. Uh, you remember the Eurobond. And so the government by that time, Ilifanikana, it was seen like it was failing. So there was a lot of hope in NASA supporters. In Raila Odinga. And I think by that time, that's why you even realize that registration is high. In 2022, there is something that I realized. Eh? The 3 million that have been added to that register, 
if someone can go back to the, I think 99 census, the people who are born between 99 and 2022 and, and 2002. And so they are first time voters. The first time voters are around 2 million. And they're the people that are not going to vote because you cannot bank on the youth. So if you ask me, the turnout in 2022, I'm expecting around 70 percent. In actually, in, uh, in 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 2010 referendum, it was 70. General election 2013 to 2025, 2017 it was 77. In 2022, if you ask me, my projection is 70 percent with all factors kept constant, and I'm going to analyze about this now. Before we go to details on how Railo Dinga can scoop it in regional. If you're watching this video and you've not yet subscribed, take a second and subscribe. And also more importantly, give it a like and click the notification bell and tell us about this register. What do you expect? Let's look at the, the dynamics of 2022 and how they can play out against Railo Dinga. The first that Railo Dinga needs is Uhuru's, solid Uhuru's endorsement so that he can get at least 40% from Central Kenya. If Uhuru endorses him, this, is, this has never happened since he started vying for the presidency. I think if he gets 40% from Central Kenya, it can translate around 1.5 million at the ballot. Kalonzo is on fold. Bring Kalonzo, it was Zimio. And in 2017, Mutua was on Jubilee side. Raila had... Um, I think Raila had Kivuda Kibwana and Chari Tingilu, but Mutua was on the other side. So this time round, Mutua is on Azimio. And Azimio, if Azimio sweeps, a very good strategy. And of course, in, 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 in Eastern, with the three governors and Kalonzo Msioka, you can scoop the two million out of the three. After the even the, the voter is the, the audit. Let's let's just give in 1.8. That will be that will be now be around two three point three. Now in costs. I think that um, he still has his traditional supporters, but unless Uhuru Kenyatta helps him to get some booster from Kwale, because the only region that have not been voting for him overwhelmingly is Kwale. Kilifi is sealed, Taita Taveta is sealed, and Mombasa. Even Mombasa, Uhuru Kenyatta will have to really stage a point there and make sure that he gets some good chunk. With the support of Uhuru who's still in coast, I think even coast is his stronghold, Raila is going to get around 1.2 there. We're already at uh, 4.5 million. If you're doing your, not 1.21, so we are at 4.3. Now let's look at Nairobi. Nairobi without a Kikuyu candidate in the presidential ballot, I think Raila is going to sweep it. Ruto cannot defeat William uh, Raila Dinga in Nairobi because all this, you know, the Luya, the Luo, the Kisi, and he's been winning Nairobi all, all through. From 2017, 2013 and 2017. Uh, 2017, 2013, 2017. So I think in Nairobi, I just expect a very good turnout. Uh, and they do a very good mobilization. And he's going to scoop 1.2. That has taken him to 5.5. Huh? Um, let's go somewhere. Where next? K Western. In 2013, um, Mudavadi was on ballot and he scooped 423,000. This time round is with William Ruto. There are different dynamics. What do you think can play for Raila Odinga in Western Kenya? The DAPK and also just make sure that he gets a good populist candidates like the Natambayas. Populist candidates in the other seats. I think with that, and now he has all the governors. You know, unlike in 2013, and I think 20, yes, unlike in 2013, Lusaka was on Jubilee. Uh, yeah, Luka was in Jubilee. Now, if he has the trends are here with Natembe on the ballot and the Zimio and take hold of Kakamega, the Higa will go with Mudavadi. Then Busia, Busia goes with him and have a chunk of Bungoma. Out of the 2.5, let's give me 1.3. That has given him 6.3. Now, Nyanza. Nyanza must vote to the last man. Nyanza must vote to the last man. And I will, in my next phase, as I'm doing strategy, I'm going to explain why, how that could, can be achieved. If Nyanza votes to the last man, this is last, Raila's last stab, I think let's give Nyanza 2.5. If you give Nyanza 2.5, we were already at 6.3, Raila has 
3%. <laughs> so guys, 8.3 million. That's what Uru got last time. 8.3 million. How about 8.3 million with a 70% turnout will be against a 7 million from William Ruta's side. That's my rough analysis. That's how I'm looking at it. The, the, the voter, the, the people are going to turn out to vote is around 16. Let's give 16 million to vote after the register is also audited and the dead voters are removed. So if 16 million go to vote and Rela gets 8.5, not 8.5, let's, let's do, let's do, I don't want to do with the rerun. Let's do 8.3 with the 15 million and the other candidates are also on the fold. Yeah. I don't know, but I think he stands a good chance to win. So guys, let's look at it now. What are the strategies that he can employ to make sure that whatever I was doing is achieved? Because for this one to do, he must get maximum turnout on the election day. And let's look at how that can be achieved. We are looking at the strategy. I want us to look at the strategies that he can employ because some of these things have been working against him in the past general elections. And one is get popular candidates on the ballot through the nomination and free and fair nomination. You know, one of the things that have been bringing low voter turnout, especially in the Nyanza region, is what I call in plain words, shambolic and biased nominations. Like Karoli and Mbadi. Karoli defeated Mbadi in Suba, but he was given the ticket. So when after that nomination, I think people tend to protest a bit and be reserved like, you know, we are not even now supporting the party. And while after doing that symbolic nomination, you pick unpopular candidate, then you go to the voters and call for a six piece. Then people get annoyed. So this time around, if you do free and fair nomination, and another thing that should be key indicator, if you do free and fair nomination, you will get the popular candidate. If you get the popular candidate, you make sure it's free and fair, even though in, in, in Africa, people won't accept even if it is however free it is. But if at least you get a popular candidate in your ballot, you stand a good chance to make people that are, get people that are going to turn out the next day on the election day and vote. Because the presidential ballot depends on the other five pieces. On the other five ballots. If someone comes to vote for the MCA, that person is going to vote for the president. Someone is not coming to vote for MP and go back home. So I think that is something that he needs to get very right. Then, in some high voltage uh, volatile, uh, voltage areas, uh, just abolish the six piece and accommodate the independent candidates. For example, if 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 you get an independent candidate like in Kirinyaga County where uh Piriti Ngirishi have decided maybe that she's going to be independent and you find she's popular when you go there whether you are a Zimio or you are UDA if you call for a six piece you are insulting the voters of the independent candidate and so they feel like okay you don't you know like the independent candidate is just vying for governor then your ballot is the presidential ballot but then you tend to say that let vote all this side Yes, it's fine to campaign for your governor, for your governor's candidate, but then I don't think you should actually underestimate the power of these independent candidates because they really get, the independent candidates have also other independent voters. <laughs> so they will come and this is going to vote, the, this is going to boost the turnout. Uh, another thing is formulate an emotional unifying campaign call. In 2017, it was called to liberate the country from what they had seen, the corruption scandal, the economy. And I think I remember Ayla going to Kibera and he was told that Bey Yaungo Ikoju, then he said that, you know, there was that unifying call for, to liberate the country and it had been done. The momentum had been built to 2017. You remember the ABC must go that had really built the momentum and of course that was there so in 2022 Raleo Dinga needs to and i think that's why they're trying to pull the mandela moment but it should be done in a manner that really is going to sway the emotions and unify people together without that the for me as as of now i have not seen that one rallying call by either of the political divide i think the hustler nation for me it's still amorphous it's not still something tangible. It's still amorphous. It's just a way of pulling crowd, but it's not something that is still emotional to me. Really, Dinger's Mandela moment, yes, it's fine, but I think it still needs to be rejuvenated and given the powers really for people 
to understand what it is all about so guys that's my analysis uh there's also going to be a uh, install a winning perception Raila Odinga voters are fatigued because they believe that Raila have been winning elections he has won elections but he has never become president so might people might even not think like let's go and vote and it's we might vote and it's stolen so you must tell people that first there is no system that is going to steal votes and really now stands a chance in fact they even believe that they need the deep state so if 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 that can be done in and it can get the perception of nyanza they will turn out and that is why i think central kenya people are being sent to nyanza uh, you saw Sabina Chege there and he, she was so well received and people really resonated with the message. If you see the central Kenya people going to campaign in Nyanza, it's for this, to let them understand that it is not going to be stolen and this time around it's Raila Odinga moment. You know, it's, it's shocking to them. Hey, I have my brother attended the CR rally and he was telling me that people are really happy and people got excited by seeing the uh, uh, Sabina Chege there. So guys, that's my analysis and I'm also going to look at something very critical on Musalem Devadi and William Ruto's plans for the Western over the weekend.